Hi. Hello, everybody. I'm very pleased to be here, and I congratulate you on being here. Uh, I, there's a lot of great input to be had here in these, these days, and I'm glad to be a part of it. I, uh, how shall I preface this? Uh, my father, for part of his career, was a salesman in the pipe and tubing industry, and it's uncanny how I have followed in his footsteps, if I think about it. Uh, at any rate, um, he once told me the key to a presentation is to tell them what you're going to tell them, and then tell them, and then tell them what you told them. And I'm not going to be that pedantic here uh, today. On the, on the contrary, uh, I'm going to let you drive uh, this class. I've spent my lifetime uh, playing the trombone, practicing uh, for a lifetime. And with that comes an awful lot of various insights, concepts, ideas, uh, some that work, some that didn't. And what I'd like to do is basically very quickly just get going with our four uh, active participants, although I view all of you as active participants also. Um, and I'll turn to you at various points and ask if you have questions or if you've if you're picking up on what we're doing here. And as far as questions go, I would, I would contend that the only dumb question is the one that does not get asked. So please don't hold back with your questions about anything that seems unclear or anything you might like to contribute as we proceed here. Um, so with that, I, I'd like to get going with our first participant. Hi. Hi, I'm Alex. Alex, very pleased to meet you. And you're here with the Saint-Saëns Cavatine. Mm -hmm. And tell me about yourself a little bit. Uh, where are you in your music career, in your life? Um, I just graduated from uh, Wando High School in Mount Pleasant, South Carolina. Mm -hmm. um, I'm going to be going to uh, University of South Carolina, studying with Brad Edwards. Excellent. Give him my very best when you start. Um, now, uh, why don't you go ahead and play a couple notes, just limber up and get going and then we'll plunge right in with the Sanson Cavatine. <laughs> For those of you who don't know the name Brad Edwards, his uh, professor-to-be, uh, Brad has been putting out some excellent works for trombone, uh, a basic blowing book, I believe it's called something original like, like lip slurs or something like that. Uh, and he has another, another very good book full of little musical um, samples and little songs and ditties uh, really aimed at specific aspects of playing and I really like the the musical con context to that. So if you don't know Brad Edwards' work, uh, go ahead and, and look him up. There's a lot to be had there. Okay, are you comfortable and ready to go? And now, are you working this up for a particular event, a performance? Is this a recent audition piece for your from your college entrance uh, auditions? Uh, I'm thinking of playing it at the uh, ETW. It's coming up. Oh, very good. Okay, good. Start working on it. Okay, then go right ahead. I'll just listen for a little bit. Thank you. Let's, let's hold up there. How many of you know the Saint-Saëns Cavatine? 
one of our really uh, standard recital pieces. And we're all here because we love the trombone, but one thing I think we have to admit is uh, not all of the top name composers have composed solo pieces for us, so that when we do have a piece written by a composer whose name your normal concert goer will recognize, it will be an important one for us. And Sanson wrote this piece. It's obviously not the most substantial piece he ever wrote. It takes all of five minutes long. Uh, but it is a delightful piece and a good showcase for the trombone. And this is the first movement. The third movement more or less mirrors it, as we'll see in a few moments. And then there's a beautiful slow movement we'll be getting to in a moment. Uh, one thing about this first movement is when you start, you're in all the way down to that bottom of the page. There aren't four bars rest in the middle where you can stop and wonder about the meaning of life or anything like that. Once you're in there, you're really in. So let's do it one more time, Alex, and focus and set your, set your sights for right there at the bottom of the page. And just play through the whole thing one more time for us. get my trombone, we'll play back and forth a little bit now. No, it's probably best if I turn the microphone off before playing. Okay, we're that. Good. Um, I'm in good hands here, I can tell. So you can't ask for a, for a nicer opening than this. Do you like the piece? Good. Have you heard it performed with piano or performed it yourself with piano? Yeah, I've heard the recording. Good. And what do you like about the piece? Uh, I like the kind of like the swashbuckling feel. Mm -hmm. the mm -hmm. Beginning and stuff. Yeah. Um, it's a pretty grandiose beginning. The piano, boom, 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 bing, and then you're on. So I want you to play from here to there. Just really your first salvo, as it were. <laughs> So even though we're within one style here, kind of grandiose and a nice rigorous beginning, there is a lot of contrast to be had. That's the, that's the one thing. And now you can play these things as the, as the markings indicate, the little slur marks with a little broader sweep. And then comes a little brilliant thing. So if you put all those things together, you have three different shades of, of expression here. Um, go ahead and see if you can do that. See if you can build all that in for us. Good. Now, let's play this first ascent. That's better. I want you to do it one more time and show me that the trombone that you're holding is a wind instrument. <laughs> <laughs> 
It's not a, it's not a tongue instrument, it's not a lip instrument, it's a wind instrument. Just with that idea, play that accent one more time. One more time. Throw, throw a nice bunch of air at that first note. Okay, uh, I'm still hearing a little bit that this is a lip instrument. Um, and one thing I've never had to tell a student is, gee, you're awfully relaxed. We're going to have to crank up the tension somewhere here. Uh, it's not happened to me yet, and it's not happening here and now. Um, and on the other hand, if I had a dollar for every time I said during teaching, let go and blow, we could probably all go out, I could treat you to a steak dinner. Uh, so forget the lips, let go and blow. Just that accent one more time. Yeah, excellent. Do it again. I'll bet you can't do it again. Let go and blow. Relax. So, do you sense that difference? And how did we get there? Let go and blow. Catching another dollar. Uh, good. So, um, that's a nice way to start. And a nice D flat major ascent is, is always welcome on the trombone. Now, let's do this one. Okay, leave the test notes out of it. Um, I, for not so much because test notes are a bad habit, but we want the corresponding good habit. Decide to go, commit. Focus, go. Okay. Yeah, that's a different mental mental focus than saying, "Oh, I'll try that first note." Oh, yeah, that's that's good. I'll go on. No, commit, focus, go. Now that's a big leap from the E flat down to the G flat. And again, here uh, you don't want to be too tense. You want to be letting go and blowing. There's a big difference between and. Go ahead and add the next four notes for us. Okay, now you mentioned you like the kind of the swashbuckler uh, air of this. Show us that. Good. Now, proceed right here at the eighth notes, right where you left off. Just the first ascent. One more time, please. Okay, so you're holding up a state-of-the-art trombone with an F attachment on it, and you're not using it to your best advantage. Uh, I want you to try something, play the B flat, in third, it'll be a slightly adjusted third with the valve, and then play the C in sixth. And just play the first four notes for me. Ba -da -da -dum, ba -da -da -dum. And now it's the same thing. You don't need to test those notes. That note's there when you need it. Trust it. Okay, now um, play, from, play the eighth notes up to the D flat. Good. Again. No, I think both of those attempts right there uh, were better than what you were doing, even though you've not practiced it this way. Um, and the reason is, uh, I think it's, it's practical, start in the F attachment and leave it, instead of start out of it, enter it, and then leave it. And these might not be your primary positions. Well, you should, not to be confused with primary physician, uh, you should uh, always be challenging yourself with, with different positions. It makes you more fluent with a slide. And you'll be finding combinations and positions that, that frankly work better. And just, just the attempt and the search makes you more fluent. Um, so that's something I think will help you here. Now, start there and continue. Okay. 
Good. Uh, very good. Now, Jeff gave me a nice introduction, and among other things, he mentioned that, that I have studied with Claude Gordon, which I have. I looked him up for a couple of lessons at one point in my career. They were very fruitful. And I've had other teachers that I would need to credit also. One thing he writes repeatedly in his books is a trumpet player on fingering. Lift the fingers high, strike them down hard. Okay, how does that translate to this slide without damaging it? Uh, my approach is toss it about. Toss it. Tommy Dorsey, for example, wrote we should throw and catch the slide. Now, the catch part is very important. We don't want to miss there. But get a tossy feeling to the slide. Let's do these eighth note essence one more time and toss the slide about. <laughs> Okay, I'll play, you play back at me. Good, good. Um, let's go on. Okay, good. Now, uh, Couple things here. First of all, when I when I pointed out your slide technique to you and mentioned tossing the slide more, uh, that brings an overall freer delivery to what we're doing. The right arm and hand, one of the important points of brass playing, uh, translates carries over into everything else we do. Uh, it can be a line of tension, or it can be a line of relaxation. It's your choice. And obviously, we want it to be a line of relaxation. So keep that in mind. Toss the slide about more. And when I pointed out the slide to you, you changed your slide grip, the way you were holding it. And without analyzing that, I would just say it was a more committed grip. Before that, you were a little lackadaisical, which if you're tossing a slide about, may backfire on you, first of all. But um, it was just a more committed slide technique. Um, now, on runs, Scalar runs are generally made up of only two things, whole steps and half steps. And I would encourage you to go in here and get your ear around where are the whole steps, where are the half steps. It's possible to start in the right note and end on the right note, but land on the cracks in between. <laughs> Singing to yourself will help that. Here are the half steps and the whole steps in any of these runs. Let's play the first movement together and then go on to the second movement, okay? Here's the piano. Boom, bing, drum. As you know, the piano now has these three sweet little chords in your right hand. And then you're on.
Very nice, very nice. This is really a beautiful movement. Good use of the alternate positions. Um, e major, uh, your intonation is pretty good in E major. There are certain things we have to pay attention to. G sharps, uh, seems like you have your, your ear around that. Very good. What I'd like to do is work on a specific breathing concept. It's a wind instrument after all. Breathing is going to be important. And I believe breathing is the single most natural thing we do in life. And I encourage you not to stop breathing. Um, so, and I like to keep it simple. And I have a couple of axioms on breathing. Assuming good posture, which we can get into, although your posture seems good. I believe the way the air goes in is the way it's going to come out. And there are a lot of theories on shallow breathing, deep breathing, diaphragmatic breathing. Um, you can ask any third grader about breathing and, and the answer, the word lungs will be in, in the first sentence of the answer. And, and brass players, singers also tend to lose sight of some of these most natural aspects. But as far as the way the air goes in is the way it comes out. It's also, if it goes in free and full and natural and easy, it'll come out that way. If it goes in sloppy, it'll come out sloppy. It's going in with some tension with you. You're not letting go of the mouthpiece. You're breathing a little bit like that. Um, and it's not helping you and you're missing a chance to relax. I view a breath as a chance to relax, to let go. Uh, some people are afraid to let go of the mouthpiece, and you say, oh, yeah, I won't, I won't find my set again. Yeah, okay, I understand that because I've been there, uh, but I got over it, and my advice is let go of the mouthpiece. Take it off the face. Take your breath, put the mouthpiece back on, under your nose and above your chin, and blow, and you'll be fine every time. Trust me. But you have to learn to trust it. So breathe quietly. Get rid of the that stuff, because you're not getting as much in as you'd like. And we all know the feeling of, oh, I didn't quite make that phrase. Well, yeah, uh, that was due to an insufficient breath. So go ahead and play again at number two. <sighs> Let's do that again. I want to concentrate on the breath after the fourth bar, where there's not a quarter rest to help you. Uh, you let go a little bit. I want you to let go all the way. Okay? One more time. aspect we can let work for us. I believe an inhalation is a natural reaction. It's not something we have to do, it's a natural reaction. Reaction to what? To the exhalation. If I take a big breath and expend it, speak it, play it, blow it to the end without losing posture, without collapsing here in the, in the upper torso, I've created a degree of vacuum here. Now, what do we know about a vacuum? Physics 101, nature abhors a vacuum. A vacuum is an unnatural state in this atmosphere. So if I have a little bit of a vacuum here, all I have to do is open my mouth and nature is going to fill it. I don't have to pull it in. No, exhale with me. Now just open. Nature does that for you. You can let that work for you. Okay, and another fine point about, about breathing, breathing naturally, breathing quietly, we want to set up the breath with the way we shape the end of the phrase and the note before it. Okay, shake, give a nice patient ending to, to that note. Okay, so now play those first. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and then surprise. You play these eight bars for us. 
And we're especially concentrating on that breath after the fifth bar. Shape the end of the A nicely and let nature fill you up again. Excellent. Very good. So you didn't need that breath, of course, then not taking it three off a little bit. That's okay. Um, so did you sense those, those natural aspects working for you? And wasn't that a, a pleasant breath, a comfortable breath? And I think your sound is coming out freer and easier now, too, because the air is going in easier. So we could apply that uh, all over here. Um, let's play together from number two, maybe not the whole movement, but... Um, and prepare the breaths with the way you shape the end of the phrase and the note before it and then let go and let nature fill you up. Let's play together. <laughs> place to stop here. It just keeps going on. Um, so what did we do here? What were the concepts? Well, we just talked about breathing quietly and naturally, and, and the difference was audible. In the first movement, tossing the slide about, letting go and blowing. That, that brought nice results. What else stood out as I worked with Alex here? Pitch. What about it? Okay, good. Curveball, fastball, whatever pitch. Yes? Mm -hmm. Yeah, thank you. Um, and like I say, I've never had to tell a student, you're awfully relaxed, we're going to have to work on tension. No, as you relaxed, a lot of these things fell into place very naturally. Um, so uh, take these ideas and make them yours. Congratulations. Another thing I've never had to tell a student is, gee, this is awfully expressive. We're going to have to tone it down somewhat. Uh, that's another one I've never had to tell a student. Oh, euphonium. Excellent. Hi, I'm Carl Lenti. Austin, nice to meet you. Austin, pleasure. Go ahead, play a couple notes, get comfortable. Are you ready? Sure. Okay. So, tell me about yourself. Where are you in your life and your music career? in high school mm -hmm. and I'll be a senior this year and I recently just played this just a concert festival oh very good okay ensemble, sorry. good how long have you been playing euphonium uh, five six years okay did you start on it among brass instruments or yes. good what else do do you do in music do you sing do you play the guitar sing. good yes very good okay well play for us a little bit this is a concert rondo by Mozart oh yeah they know that it'll be there 
Hold up there for a moment. Very nice. Do you play golf? No. Neither do I. Uh, but you know what a mulligan is? A mulligan is when you get to take a shot over again. And I'm going to give you a mulligan here. I want you to play that for us again. But before you do, I want to ask you, what will you try to do differently if you do it again? Just focus more. Get center of pitch. Okay. That's always a good thing. Anything else? Apparently there is something else. <laughs> oh, uh, well, uh, let's open that one up. I, I have a couple things, but if, if he's going to try it again, what, what should he try to do? Yeah, as we're working with Alex, that's that's one thing. Uh, anything else? Yes. Okay. Good. Anything else? Yes. Phrasing. Good. Always a good one. And I would I would suggest also, as I told Alex, I want I want you to show us that this is a, a wind instrument, not a lip instrument. I'm going to even to take that a little further. I want you to show us that this is an, an air propelling instrument. You're launching air into the room. Okay. Okay. Good. Go ahead. <laughs> Okay, good. Um, so, uh, neither of us play golf. Uh, do you ever do paintballing? Mm -hmm. Ah, okay. Well, if you had a paintball gun that went like that, you would take it back and, and get a good one. Okay, and and that's kind of what your what your airball gun is is doing here. So, get one that's really a uh, a lot more lively, a lot more active. There you go. Good. Excellent. Do you sense that difference? No. It's not easy as a... Yeah, absolutely. It's not easy as a, as a high school senior to stand up here and, and present. And yet, that's what you're here for and that's what you're doing. And... and so relax, enjoy it. Uh, I believe most, most people, certainly not all of them, most people are uh, more likely introverted than extroverted. Okay, uh, let that be as it may. If you pick up a brass instrument, there's no sense being shy or introverted. Let this be the, the yin to the other yang, okay? When, when you pick this up, you're an extrovert, okay? You're a ham. Go ahead, do it one more time. Good, we'll go on now. And this has nothing to do with playing louder or softer. We're in a, basically in a, in a piano neighborhood here. Yes, I see that, but you still want to be playing freely. Go ahead. Let go and blow. <sighs> Good. 
Do that much again, please. <laughs> Okay, good. Play the first two bars for me. Just play that bit, please. Okay, uh, two things. I want to talk about airflow and I want to talk about articulation. Uh, did your mother ever tell you to please speak clearly? Yeah, me too. Um, and and we have here no if I weren't seeing that there I wouldn't know that that's what's written I was hearing um, so that's the one thing let's do, play those bars again and speak clearly blow freely but speak clearly yeah do it again that's an improvement yeah, excellent. Now, airflow, airflow, air focus. Um, there's a difference between a middle B flat and the F above it, the way you deliver the air. Um, I think as we go higher, the air gets faster and more focused. And not. Go ahead, do that for us. You hear that difference? Yeah. Now, there's, there are a lot of books out in the table, uh, and I can recommend every one of them, with the exception of one that I just saw for the first time this morning. I have them all, and I use them all. And one that comes to mind here is Claude Gordon's Brass Playing is No Harder Than Deep Breathing. And that's what we have here. Um, and in, in it, I, I think it, in the book he uses this analogy. An airplane needs two things to rise. It needs to change the flaps, and it needs thrust. One of those things alone, either one, won't do it. If, if you just do the flaps, then your plane will be like that and keep flying along like that without rising. If you just give it thrust, it'll go faster, but it won't go higher. You need both of those things together. So go ahead, play there, and go on for us. Excellent. You're getting better from minute to minute. See, great. Take a take a bow. <laughs> Now, one detail that I don't, oh, don't think you've gotten your ear around yet. You're seeing E flat, you're pushing down the, the right button, but it's not in your ear yet. So uh, play with me, or without me. And do the same thing again, the next two bars. Okay, well, you jumped ahead of me, but that, that's okay. Um, but to get your ears into that difference, I think, I think the hearing is so important. Uh, we can push the right buttons, we can, <laughs> we can do everything right, and, and if, we, if we're not hearing it, it's not going to work. Um, singing is, is very important, and we're all singers. Uh, some of us only in the shower or the car, but we're all singers. Uh, and now singers have no mechanical execution. No buttons to push, no lengths of tubing or wire to establish. They have to hear and generate the pitches in the interval. And so when you do that, um, you want to bring those capabilities back to here when, when we do, of course, have mechanical execution. But you want to have the hearing very active in the process. So, do you have a favorite part of this piece somewhere further on? Okay, let's go over there. This is letter G on page two.
basically one concept, but before we get there, uh, you have no reason not to trill uh, with the euphonium. So, just do that for us. You can do a trill. Uh, I would do the, try the D open. Yeah. And it, 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 and it doesn't even have to be at the speed of light. Uh, it doesn't have to be so fast. Okay. That's something to work on. But you have no reason to avoid the trills. You're never going to learn to trill if you don't seize them. That's the one thing. And then uh, I'm going to play, play mother again and say, Please speak clearly. We have a lot of articulation information on the page here. Now, none of it has to be the last word in the subject. You could split hairs endlessly about how to group notes, which ones to slur, which ones not to slur. But what you're doing is what I call coincidental articulation. There's no, no system behind it. So for starts, let's play exactly what's there. Just play that bit. Do you know what you played? You went you're getting closer. Now you're playing do ti ti o a, but it's do ti ta vo da ta va to. Okay, and you, uh, don't, it's not ti ta ta, but ta va ta. Okay, uh, you're getting close. I would really draw your attention to these details. Um, speaking clearly or, or playing articulation very precisely elevates us. It's fascinating to sit here and watch a, a mental focus come over your face as, as, as you become aware of these things. So work on that. Um, it would be very good. Um, any questions about what we've done here or ideas? You had a couple of great breakthrough moments. Do you remember what they were? Let go and blow, yeah. And the air flow, the air focus, speaking clearly, and getting, getting your ears uh, more into the game. Excellent, congratulations, have fun with it. Now I believe they're changing a tape up there, so we can just chat a little bit as our next student gets ready. Uh, Anybody heard any good jokes lately? <laughs> okay. Okay, sure, go ahead. Yeah, that was to speak them. I, I, as a, I suppose I could have gone da 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 ha da da ha da. Yeah, like, like a V in there. Well, uh, I spend a lot of time teaching and come up with things sometimes, and, and, and that's one, just to get it across. Now, I'm not saying that I'm using a, a V articulation when I play, obviously, although it might be worth trying out if I get bored someday. Uh, but Good. Thank you. Compliment received on this end. <laughs> Anything else? Thoughts, ideas, what we've been doing up here? Do you do any reading exercises at the moment? Yes. Um, I've done many over the years. My 
all-time favorite is open a window and breathe deeply. <sighs> Frankly. Um, and, oh, I've done yoga breathing exercises. Uh, I'm not sure from direct relation to playing, just for general well-being. Uh, and again, to hark back to Claude Gordon, he has a couple of good breathing exercises um, to be done in walking. Certain number of steps inhale, certain number of steps hold, certain number of steps exhale, certain number of steps hold the exhaled. And that, that was a very good one for me when I was uh, ambitious and disciplined and doing it. Um, it. It's important not to let tension creep in on you when you're doing that. And especially the holding the exhaled position uh, is almost for me like a, an isometric moment where you don't want any sympathetic tension, just, just the actual blow machine. Um, Can you do any isometric exercises uh, without, without the wind, just those muscular? Face muscles? Yeah. No. No. Uh, as I said, I've not met anybody who's too relaxed. Uh, and there's a lot of talk about strength and lip strength and things and and frankly I think your lips were strong enough to play the trombone if not the day you were born certainly by the day you had your your adult teeth let me put it that way I don't think my lips are any stronger today than they were 40 years ago uh, and I really don't concentrate on the lips I let go and blow and forget the lips are a couple of things I think now, sometimes we have to, I keep saying, forget that, don't worry about it, it'll take care of itself, different things. True, most of the time. Sometimes we really do have to take things apart and analyze them. Sometimes errors have crept in on us. Uh, sometimes we really do have to analyze and take things apart so that we can put them back together and rely on them being automatic and natural. But no, I, I don't adhere to... Uh, Isometric exercises, there, there's some like weight balancer you'd put in your lips and hold it real tight and, and I, I just don't go there anymore. I, I've tried it. I've tr like I said, I've spent my lifetime trying things and practicing and uh, some of the things I've decided that's not for me and discarded it. Any other questions? Yes, please. Thank you for the question. I, I can answer it, I think, rather specifically. Um, when I, I, that was Alex, and I said, you're afraid to let go, you're holding tight, and I know that because I've been there. And when I realized, I just didn't like that feeling of not getting the thing off my face. So how do I let go of this thing? And, and so I'd be playing a, a Roshu vocalese, what else? And, and between phrases, I just couldn't get the thing off my face. So I said, well, okay, I'm going to divide and conquer. At the end of the first phrase, I'm going to take the bottom lip off the mouthpiece. At the end of the next phrase, I'm going to take the top lip off the mouthpiece. And it wasn't long from there until I was able to really let go. So yeah, I remember working on that quite uh, uh, decidedly. At first, uh, you're, you're asking all the right questions, thank you. At first, uh, I was losing time between the phrases. True, if I had had to adhere to a metronome, it, it wouldn't, I would not have been able to do that. And like anything we're practicing, the more often you repeat it in perfection, the quicker, the lighter, the easier, whatever it becomes. So for me, it was more important that it be a good breath, a relaxed and let go breath then that it be absolutely in time. And I just trusted that repeating that countless times, as, as we do in practicing over the days and the years, um, would lead to that, and, and it did. And sure, there are still, still instances where, where it's a challenge. Um, but those were my, um, kind of my, that was my mindset on that. I just decided I need to let go of this, and I, I did it a lip at a time. Okay, great. Any last questions before I proceed here? Okay, thanks for the questions. Hi. Owen. 
Owen, we met earlier, didn't yeah. we? Yeah, yeah, good. Bass trombone. Now, unfortunately, I flew here uh, yesterday, uh, and I have nothing against flying when I'm finally in the air, but otherwise everything else about flying is rather tedious. If I had driven, I would have had my bass trombone here, I would have had my euphonium here. So uh, I'm just going to kind of fake it without a bass trombone. But oh, and go ahead, play some notes, limber up, and get ready to go. So, uh, tell me about yourself. Where are you in life and your music career? I uh, just finished uh, grad school at the University of uh, uh, Utah in Salt Lake. Was that with Don Schaefer? Uh-huh. Oh, yep. excellent. Give yep. him my best, please. Will do. And um, now I'm at home for the summer and moving up to New York in the fall, in August. Okay, so, and what are your plans there? Um, find something to do. <laughs> Get a job. Good. <laughs> excellent. Uh, New York City. Mm -hmm. Okay and find a job, something to do, find a job, ideally playing? Ideally playing, yeah. Okay. Um, um, until that happens, whatever will give me a paycheck. Yeah. I'll pay the rent. Now, you'll all be receiving a lot of uh, career advice uh, in these days. And just, just a sentence or two about this. First of all, go for it, absolutely. Uh, some people say, oh, New York, I mean, there's, there's no work there anymore. Well, if there's one city in the world where there should be work for musicians, you would think it'd be New York City, and, and it is. Uh, you have to get there, you have to pay your dues, you probably may have to take a day job, and whatever that may be, and, and work your connections. What, a free reading session down at the Union Hall? What time? I'll be there. Uh, and looking up some of the top players for lessons is a, is a good way to not only make connections, but get good lessons. Um, and I've had uh, former students uh, go on exactly this adventure. I had one whose day job was walking dogs for rich people, like one of these guys with three and four dogs on each hand. And he did that for, for some years and did all of the above and, and actually ended up working into the scene. So good luck with that and, and go there with the best of optimism. Okay. Now, this is the Lawson Two Fantasy Pieces. And is there an occasion for this? Have you performed it recently, or are you preparing I've it for I've actually never performed it before. I've just always kind of brought it out for a little bit, and stuck mm -hmm. it away, then brought it out for a little bit, stuck it away, and never actually worked on it a whole lot. Um, OK, well, so let's work on it now. Eventually, I would like to perform it. I like it a lot. But OK, good. Then go ahead and share it with us. Now, 
if the trombone fairy were to descend upon us here with her magic wand and say, Owen, two wishes, not even three anymore, two. Uh, two wishes, just tell me what they are and I'll wave the magic trombone wand and, and they'll be yours. What would you wish for? Flexibility ranges, range, flexibility, uh, jumping between ranges, going between ranges. Okay, let's just call that one ease. That'll make ease, the most ease. of one ish right. wish right there. Ease, okay. Um, and consistent air support. Consistent air support. Or consistency, just to make it even more of a wish. Okay, or air. Air consistency. Okay, good. Uh, I, I'm with you there. Now, what would any of you uh, wish from the trombone fairy for Owen, having just heard him play? Ah, warum das? <laughs> yeah. Uh, okay. Uh, I think I can. I think I know where you might be coming from with that. Anything else? What would anybody else wish for Owen? More expressive. More expressive, yeah. I've, as I said, I've never had to tell somebody, we're going to have to tone it down here. Uh, you were really flying along at quite a pace here. Yeah, I uh, have a to go too fast on this. Yeah, and actually being fluent in German would help when I see langsam mit Empfindung vorzutragen. Langsam, that's, that's one of the most basic words. In English, that would be adagio. Um, Right, uh, and mit Empfindung vorzutragen, that means with, with great f to present with great feeling. And we have a metronome marking there, which is probably a good guideline. Let's talk about ease, and it's going to be the same thing I worked on with uh, Alex, about breathing quietly and letting, letting nature fill you. Uh, and going back to the question about breathing, uh, often we let... Uh, brass player considerations and compromises, frankly, determine the music. And you're doing that a little bit. These are beautiful phrases. And you're saying, oh, I don't want to breathe there because then I have to let go and come back in on an E-flat. Okay, and you don't, want, you don't want that kind of mindset. You don't want that determining your music. Um, I'll play along with you a little bit on the tenor. Play for us, please, up to the quarter rest from the beginning. One hand, you know, I would be imploring you seek out the sweep of the phrases and all that. That's good, but fall in love with with every note. Uh, speaking of the German language, uh, German has a lot of consonants in it, and so one syllable it might take an awful lot of pronouncing. Give that kind of care to the individual notes. Go ahead. That last breath you took for the subito piano was excellent. I want to challenge you to breathe before bar six the same way, where you're actually currently not breathing. Right. Trust it. Set it up. Get a nice shape to the end of the phrase, a nice release to the note. 
let go and let nature fill you up. One more time. Very nice. And and uh, you're a little slow with the yeah. thumb there. Go ahead. Be a little more decisive there. talk about why that breath wasn't good. Uh, you didn't let go, you were adhering to the mouthpiece, and then pss, pss, there was that too, the, the tongue up there by the roof of the mouth. Now, if you think about it, what, what's it doing up there? I should get in the way. Uh, yeah, exactly, thank you. Better answer than I had myself. So, one more time. Prepare the breath and let it be a nice, natural, quality breath. probably nicer to play that way too. I think yeah. it's a liberating feeling. Yeah. So you have to first learn to do it and then learn to trust it and, and work on it quite conscientiously until, until it becomes second nature. Right, right. And, um, I mean, originally I was working on it to hold the crescendo out, but yeah. I wasn't, I wasn't mm -hmm. really taking a breath there and then someone mm -hmm. else had suggested doing that. And yeah, okay. It, it may have been a musical consideration yeah. and you but, can, you but can but take these things any number of ways. Easier, so. Yeah, yeah. Um, Good. Do you have a favorite part of the piece that we haven't got to yet? Actually, let's go down here, letter A. Sure. And see, now this is a lot more active, flowing eighth notes, but the same qualities still apply. You do that one more time and sure it's a lot of notes it's a lot busier than it was I want you to blow the line more than the notes and not so and there's a nice blow profile to these phrases too they cover an octave and a half we spoke about airflow and air focus earlier let go and blow Difference? I think markedly better, freer. You sense the difference too. Yeah. And was it easier? Much. And it sounded better? Now, one of my complex theories is, is if it's easier and it sounds better, we should do it. So <laughs> every time, it's, it's a good bargain. So go ahead, play one more time, let go and blow, and show us the blow profile. A string player would, I would say, use more bow, not do do di da da, but yo da di da vi da, play with more bow. Last thing I want to do, and, and then I do have one more uh, person waiting. Um, play the same thing again, and boy, you have a quarter rest to breathe. There's really no reason to do a loud, gaspy <laughs> kind of breath. Uh, so you're sensitized to that now. Set it up and get a quality breath. Same passage, one last time. Quality breaths. It 
it's that easy. Uh, and, and so you have to commit yourself to the highest quality in all of these regards, the breathing, the, the articulation, the phrasing, intonation, all these things. There's no sense, uh, well, we'll put it this way, there's already so much mediocrity in the world, we needn't contribute more to it. Always be striving to get the highest quality, the greatest excellence in what you're doing. You're proving that you can. And there's no sense even beginning the endeavor unless you're committed to that level. So congratulations. Thank you. And we have a grand finale waiting right here. Any questions while he unpacks? Let me get my notepad out first. I keep a catalog. <laughs> Funny you should ask. Yeah? Carl Lenthe. And your name? Well, oh, West, of course, yes, we met earlier. Um, why don't you take the good side of the stand and play a couple notes limber up? This will be about Paul Creston's fantasy for trombone and orchestra. Okay, uh, give us a little thumbnail sketch of you, where you are. Okay, and the Creston Fantasy, are you working this up for a specific event? Yeah, um, the Alessi Seminar uh, later on. Coming up, good for you. Okay, um, how can we make the best use of our time for you? Where do you want to jump in here? Um, either, uh, either, either the first section or the slow section would be probably best. I, I'm, the, the last section, I'm, I would be fine with playing it, so I'm still... Let, let, let's go from the beginning. Well begun is half done. You can find that in one of the Herbert Clark books. Okay, that was, that was my signal there. So uh, go ahead, play for us. Okay, let me 
Um, very good, first of all. And uh, we're in our final minutes here. So what I would suggest, that we're going to do a little bit, I'm going to talk a little bit. You and I should get together sometime in the next couple of days and, and make up the time we didn't have here. Um, the Crest and Fantasy for Orchestra, uh, what, when was it written? Late 40s, early 50s, 1951. Um, what was the biggest thing in the trombone world in 1951? Tommy Dorsey, thank you. Uh, and I believe, uh, I'll speak about him a little bit tomorrow night, um, but he, he had the trombone as popular as Mick Jagger had, had the electric guitar and, you know, a few decades later. I, your normal man on the street could sing Tommy Dorsey tunes. It was uncanny that, that Dorsey got the trombone into the public awareness. And I believe a number of our top uh, concertos were really inspired by him. Obviously this one, the Tomasi Concerto, if you think about the opening to that, uh, the Martin Ballade and uh, parts of the Larsen Concertino, you'll see a lot of influence. So don't forget that this was born of that virtuosity, not of the back row of an orchestra trombone virtuosity, which I don't mean to belittle at all because I'm one of those nerds. Um, so keep that kind of brilliance and showmanship in what you're doing here. Uh, do you know who played the premiere of the piece? Does anybody here know the name Robert Marsteller? Um, was a West Coast trombone player. He was actually more of a classical player. Uh, a lot of studio work, taught at UCLA. Um, I'll talk about him another time. Um, but let's play a little bit. Uh, we'll play back and forth. Play, play the opening for me. Now, you know how the, how the orchestra starts? Uh, I'll, I'll kind of scat sing your, your intro for you. And, you know, I just want you to play up to there, okay? Yum, ba da ding dun da da dun ding da da ding da da ding dun ding Okay, uh, you're playing with a, a good precision of articulation. I'm all for that. Uh, it's getting a little bit uh, towards pecky. Uh, can we make it a little bouncier? Uh, let's, let's bring the Dorsey thing back to mind. Let me see if I can do this. Oh, boy, did I get lucky. Uh, so, <laughs> but you never know. Uh, go ahead, see, see if you can put it a little bit, uh, a little bouncier. Okay, a couple things. I want you to toss the air about more freely, more liberally, and the accents, you can make more of the accents. And I view accents almost always not so much as hit this note harder, but let them shape the phrase, the inflection. The, the, uh, now, about tossing the air about. <laughs> Do you ever play the air trombone? Play the air trombone on, on those two bars once or twice. And the other thing is, is where you have these little toozy slurs. Da, da, ta, da, 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 ta. Those are good opportunities to, to toss the air. I would throw more air at the first of the two notes. Ta, 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 ta. Now play it uh, this time with tone. <laughs> You hear a difference? For me, for me, that opened up. Did you sense a difference? Um, so, uh, you and I should get together later today, or maybe tomorrow morning or Saturday, uh, and work further on this. Uh, you sound very good. There are some things I would uh, impart to you. Is that a question on your on the tip of your tongue? No. Well, too bad. Um, I think we're at the end of our time here. Uh, any parting shots or questions or ideas?
Yes, please. Anything else? Well, again, I congratulate you all on being here. Uh, thank you to our, to our active participants here. A hand for all of them. And I'm here for you uh, today and tomorrow and Saturday. So uh, if you're like I am, you usually have the best questions after, after the event. Uh, but I'm here, so approach me and ask me, OK? Thank you for your attention.